welcome <laughs> welcome to my channel welcome to the unconventional path i'm corel pinder and we are doing another episode on dating in your 30s so the last dating in your 30s episode was what was annoying about dating in your 30s this episode is what i like because there are things there are things and i also did the poll again and as you can see there are people who answered on WhatsApp to give me their opinions about how they felt about dating in your 30s and what they liked because there, there's some things that we like. So one of the things that I like about dating in my 30s is I am more, number one, I am more self-aware. I am definitely way more self-aware than I was in my 20s. I have taken the time to understand who I am as a person. I remember the last serious relationship I was in, the guy I was dating was like, you never want to spend time alone. You always want to spend time with me. And I'm like, yeah, that's why we're together. Spend time together. Woo woo. And he was just like, no, I like, I need you to learn how to be by yourself. And when I took that year off of dating, I really learned how to be by myself. I learned about, you know, my strengths, my weaknesses, my goals, my desires, my dreams you know my triggers my traumas like I'm more self-aware so the first thing that I like about dating in my 30s is that I'm more self-aware and I'm more independent within myself and what do I mean by that is not I'm independent I don't need a man no 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 I mean that I'm independent in terms of I'm not going to be codependent on a relationship whereas that relationship defines who I am as a person because I believe I did that a lot in my 20s I relied on a relationship to define who I am versus now I'm bringing my whole self that I know to the relationship so that's the first one the second thing of what I like about dating in your 30s is that when I choose to get to know someone or choose to, you know, engage in a relationship with someone, it is solely based on my core values. Before, I would definitely say that when I was dating, I was going by a societal checklist. And what that means is, do I find them attractive? You know, do they have a great job? Do they have goals? Are they financially stable? You know, just society things that people, and not that those aren't things that I want, but those aren't the things that draw me to the person. It's more, do we have shared core values? And when you talk about your values, what is first? And I think what is always also important is not someone just riddling that, oh, my core values are faith and family. Because even I had to do this for myself, like I would riddle off my core values. And I realized that you have family very high, but you don't spend a lot of time with your family. So is it really a core value for you? And so I had to start implementing actively in my life things that reflected my list of what was core values for me. So it's not only hearing what someone says, but taking the time to observe what really is a core value for you. So if you're saying that, you know, faith is important to me and family is important to me and setting goals, but every time you have free time, you're just playing video games, then video games is a core value for you. You know, recreation, that's a core value. But, you know, what I like right now is the fact that I am drawn to core values and not a societal checklist of this looks good on paper so you should date this person. Number three, I am more intentional about my boundaries. And so in my 20s, I would say, you know, I'm waiting for, you know, for marriage or I'm trying to abstain and eventually we'll just keep, there's no boundaries in place. At all it's just something I said at the beginning of the relationship and then you just allow things to go where they go and then you just in another sexual relationship but from now and sometimes my mom says that she thinks that I say it too early but I remember I met this guy in the airport once he was really attractive he was really smooth on his pickup line I was reading a book he came over and he was just like you know is it okay if I charge my phone on the side of you and I was like okay sure super cute so I'm just like all like excited by this point and so he was like so what are you reading and I was just well I'm reading this and like we engage in conversation I was like yes Lord it was like around Christmas time I was like you better deliver this Christmas gift Jesus yes yes look at you showing up around Christmas time and so you know we talked in the airport then we went on the plane and then we found you know when you travel at local you could just switch your seat so we just went and switched our seat and got on the seat next to each other so we're talking back and forth this great banter and at the time I used to wear my promise ring all the time I still have my promise 
much ring. I still wear it every now and then. But at that time, I used to wear it like religiously. And so he was like, oh, what's the ring for? And I was just like, oh, because I'm abstinent. And he was like, I'm sorry, what? I was like, yeah, like I don't plan to have, you know, sex in relationships where I'm just dating. I'm waiting until I'm married. He's like, wow, that is so great. Okay, we can't date. We, this, this, this back and forth, this stops here. We'd be really great friends because I could just never date somebody who's not willing to have a sexual relationship while they're dating. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was not offended. Like I, I laughed because I appreciated his honesty. He was so honest. And to this day, we're good friends. If I see him, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Um, and it's cool, but I was, I was very intentional about my boundaries. And so before it would be really light. It would be, but I think he could see like, she's wearing this promise ring. She told me this on the first conversation. She's very serious about this. So I like the fact that when I set boundaries now at this point in my thirties, that I'm intentional about it. The fourth thing, is the in-depth conversations you have with the right people. I know in the last dating episode, I talked about, you know, poor communication, but when you do run across somebody that you're aligned with and you're like-minded and those conversations, those conversations are, you know, they're in depth. Like I was having a conversation and it wasn't like a date. It was sort of like a good friend, but we were like-minded. And so like the in-depth of the conversation of, you know, in the Bible, it says this. And what is your viewpoint on that? And I was just like, whoa, like these weren't conversations I was having before. Like, have you ever been to therapy? And, you know, what were some of the things that you explored in therapy? And what did that make you realize about yourself? What did that make you realize about your relationship with your parents? Just like those in-depth conversations about who you are and how your childhood affected who you are as a person and how your last relationship was shaped and what do you do differently now, now that you approach relationships and just, just overall about yourself like digging deep and so those weren't conversations i was having in my 20s so again they're not everybody but when you do find those rare gems those conversations be hitting deep so that's the fourth one number five we got more money now. We got we had a little more money than when you were in your 20s and the dates were kind of like low key. So, and then I think people are more creative. Like I was in Florida, I can't remember like a year or two ago and I went on a date and we went to top golf. Like I've done mini golf, miniature golf, but I've never done top golf. I was like, "Yes, introduce me to all the things of the top golf and and let's, you know, get a blanket and order hot chocolate and just do the top golf thing." Yes, like so being more creative and having more money to do kind of like, you know, different kinds of dates, that is something that I enjoy about dating right now. The sixth thing that I like about dating in your 30s is I'm now okay with solo dates. Like I don't love solo traveling. I know that's a big thing among single women now. Not a fan of it. Did it in Germany. I'm good. I'm good on the solo traveling. But solo dates like going to a restaurant or going to the movies or going for a walk or like sometimes I go to events and I go by myself and I'm just like I'm going to socialize and mingle. I have a pretty extroverted personality. So like solo dates don't bother me. Also something that didn't bother me that bothered me in my 20s that don't bother me in my 30s is being the third wheel, third wheel dates. I go with my married friends all the time. Um, I don't feel no ways about it. It's just like I, I feel like I learn from them as a couple. I do something that I enjoy and I, I'm not going to miss out on life just because either I have to do it solo or I have to do it as a third wheel. It's just okay with me. I'm just very, very comfortable with that state in, in this age. And so that's something else that I'm glad about that. I'm no longer insecure about, oh, I can't do this because it's going to be a solo date or I can't do it because it's going to be a third wheel date, Shh, whatever it is, I, I'm going to get out there. So. That's something that I am happy about when it comes to dating in my 30s. And the final one, number seven, the final thing that I like about dating in my 30s is that God is much more involved in my dating life than he was before. He was kind of like something that I just checked off my list, but because I have an intimate relationship with God and I talk to God all the time, it's reassuring to know that if I'm going through a struggle in my relationship that I could talk to God about it, that I, I find my safe space, that my person is not there to make me happy. They add to my happiness, but my joy, my fulfillment, my happiness, that comes from God. And so if we go through a situation where, you know, we're not having a great day, 
then of course you want to get to the bottom of it you want to work it out you want to have that conversation where it leads to you know being on the same page again but in my 20s your girl was stressed your girl was freaking out she was just distraught like i don't know what to do with myself i'm just like because i was so codependent on a relationship so now that i have a relationship with god I go to God for my foundation, for my fuel, for my joy, and my relationship will just add to that. So that's that's the, the final thing that I'm excited about. Join me in the comments below. You know, let me know. You know, did anything did you resonate with? Did you have ones that I did not mention? We have episodes every Wednesday and once a month. We lock into the series of dating in my 30s and what it's like. And so I hope that you're a part of this series, but in the entire channel, which is the unconventional path that God has been carrying me on and we'll be here every Wednesday as I said so don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I can't wait to see you guys next week